welcome to the Feed You podcast, giving you the real scoop on raising your business to new heights. Expert education, inspiration, and motivation to fuel your purpose, your passion, and your profits. Here's your host, Elisa Connor. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Feed You podcast. And I just want to wish each of you a very happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. This episode is coming out the day before Thanksgiving, which is why I thought it was a great time to talk about gratitude. Um, I find it very interesting that as a society, we get really focused on gratitude for the month of November. And then um, the rest of the year, we're just like, oh, yeah, what? Gratitude? (laughs) So... Um, gratitude is somewhere that I've been really consciously focusing a lot of energy, not only this year, but in the, in the past few years. Um, and it, it's, uh, an area that I, I find very intriguing and, um, I, I'm sure I've told the story many times about, uh, one of my last conversations with my dad was when he was in the oncologist's office getting chemo and he turned over to me and he, and he said, um, what do you think happens when you die? And I, I always remember the words coming out of my mouth and going, where are these coming from? Um, but what I said to him, and now I know um, later that the words were coming through me and not from me. Um, but what I said to him was that we are all energy. And so even though you will no longer be in this body, you are still going to be very much a part of everything. I said, it's like a two way mirror. You're no longer enclosed in this body that's keeping your energy captive. However, you're going to be able to see us and hear us and interact with us. We're just not going to be able to do the same. And so as I thought about that, and this has been, uh, my dad's been, he, he passed away five years ago this past July. And um, so I've had some time to contemplate it and think about it. But the, that conversation although relative for him was more of a gift to me because it got me to begin studying um, energy and how energy works and um, vibration and all these other different things. And so what I want to present to you today, I'm actually reading a book right now and you may or may not be aware, uh, have read this, but it's the, it's called The Kabbalion and I will link to it in the show notes. And I have a lot of... Um, amazing, amazing healers in my life who, uh, when I tell them about this book, they're like, oh yeah, I've read that. And I was like, well, it's not really a book you read. It's kind of a book you study. Um, and so I want to recommend it to you. It is a, the Kabbalion is really a collection of the study, the studies and teachings from ancient Egyptian times. And a lot of the studies and the hermetic principles in this book, and it's not a very big book, um, but don't let it fool you because there's a lot here. I was going to look and see how many pages. So it's just over a hundred pages long. Um, But I've been reading it a chapter a day and it's taking me a long time because it gives you so much to think about. But one of the things that um, they talk about with these different laws of um, basically yourself and source and all these different things is the, the principle of vibration. And why this one I think is important for this episode as we start to talk about gratitude is that if you're not in alignment with the the um, vibration of being grateful on a regular basis, then you may um, be out of alignment with receiving. Um, So before I jump too much into the principle of vibration, I just want to read to you, you know, the Kabbalion. The, the third um, principle is that of vibration. And it says that nothing is at rest, is at rest. Everything moves and everything vibrates. And since nothing is at rest, that really plays into the scenario that I talked about with my dad, that we are all energy and we are all constantly in motion. And the only thing that really you can count on changing is change itself. And so um, not changing. And I don't know what I was trying to say, but the only constant thing in, in life is change. And the more comfortable you become with that, the better off and the happier and the more well adjusted you're going to be. And sometimes that change can be painful and sometimes it can be really hard. And I'm not saying it's easy, but awareness, as I talked about in my previous episode, is really the key ingredient to go along with that. 
And so as we come up on Thanksgiving, and I want to I wanna ask you, um, is this the only time of year you feel grateful? Or is it something that you carry with you on a regular basis? And if it is something that you carry with you on a regular basis, are you also grateful for the lessons as well as the bounties? And what I mean by that is that, you know, we don't always have a joyful, happy experience every single day of our lives. However, when we have pain in our lives, that is a lesson. And if we are grateful for the lesson because it is teaching us something to get us to the next goal, stage, whatever you want to say in our lives, can you look at it differently? And so when you connect to your vibration, if you are living in a vibration of constant gratitude, meaning everything that happens happens for a reason, it's for your best good, it's for your highest um, learning, all of those different things, are you looking at the experiences in your life and the things that happen in your life with gratitude? Um, So are you only grateful when you get a new client or you get paid? or you get um, somebody on your email list or really big things happen? Or are you grateful because you have heat and you have electricity and because you have food to eat and because somebody grew that food and somebody put it in the grocery store? And um, so when we really look in depth at gratitude, how, how big is your gratitude? Is it just for the big things that happen or are you grateful for all of the little things that you take granted for granted? And I am by no means perfect at this, but which is why I I share my experiences and the things that I'm learning, because I'm hoping that it will help you as well. Um, And so when I started reading The Cabalion, and I would highly recommend this book if you um, are interested in all about um, the different hermetic principles, they're very, very interesting. And they have been around for thousands and thousands of years, even before modern um, what are modern studies of philosophy and alchemy and all these different things. So they're really the foundation to a lot of the things that um, we practice and have degrees for now. Um, so things like chemistry and medicine and all of those different things that we um, embrace highly as a culture now are founded in these principles. So the one I really want to talk about today, again, is the principle of vibration, which states that nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. And so if you can put that into um, perspective, nothing stays the same, which we are very aware of, everything changes, the seasons change, you age, everything changes in your life. If you really sit, stop for a minute and focus, um, nothing is the same even day to day. Even your body changes um, by shedding skin every, I think it's every 30 days you have a new, a whole new set of skin. I can't remember the exact time frame. I'm sorry, but um, regardless, your body is constantly changing too. You change from a child to adulthood, but physically changing as well. And so um, on, on a regular basis, it's not even year after year. It's like more regular than that. Um, and so if you can embrace that, that everything is moving, everything is changing and even take it one step further that we are all energy and force and planes of energy and force, then when you can master that energy and take control of how you are mentally perceiving and reflecting, then you can control your existence. You can control your experience. And so if that's true and you can control um, your vibration of how you show up, which is either positive or negative, then you can control your experience to a degree. And actually it's not even to a degree. You can control your experience because even if something perceived negative happens, if you have a positive perception of it, you are controlling that perception and making it positive so that it will turn out positively. So I hope that makes sense. That was a little bit like uh, hard to explain. Um, I feel like there needs to be a drawing. You can't draw on podcasts, but (laughs) anyway. So, um, you know, looking at that, if you have your vibration and you are literally energy. So let's talk about that for a minute. 
if you are, if your body and the person that you are, are indeed 100% energy, is that realistic? You're like, no, I'm not energy. I'm solid. Like I'm, I can poke my hand and it's solid. However, if you look at the scientific piece of it, 99%, actually it's 99.9999999999% of your body is made up of atoms, which are not solid. There's hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. They're all, they're not solid unless they're put together. So is it your perception that you are a solid human or is it that you're just moving so quickly because we don't stop moving that you appear solid? Um, and so, if we're constantly in motion and we are energy, which science says we are, then we have the power to change our energy. We have the power to change our perception. We have the power to focus on um, that, which we would like to have more of, because if we're energy, energy attracts like energy. Um, It's very magnetic that way. And so if you're focusing on the doom and the gloom and the, uh, that's one of the reasons I just stopped watching the news and stopped watching, um, I don't really get on social media much and I kind of, I'm pretty disconnected. Like (laughs) if people go, oh yeah, what about, but I'm like, I don't know what's happening. And I'm actually fine with that because the things that I need to focus on are not in that arena. Um, And so the perceptions that you carry forward and the perceptions of um, how you change that energy, either positively or negatively, will attract more of it. And so if you're focused on the negative, like everything bad happens to me and I don't have any money and um, I don't have any clients and my, my life sucks and I have a crappy job and I have a crappy car and I keep getting in car accidents. Well, guess what? That's exactly what's going to keep happening because like energy attracts like energy. And so in order to shift that, one of the simplest and easiest ways to shift that is to focus on gratitude. Because when you are grateful, it is impossible to have a negative thought. Um, And if you don't believe me, try it. If you are focused truly on gratitude and being thankful, it is impossible to have a negative thought because they can't exist in the same thought. So um, how does this lead to Thanksgiving? Well, obviously we are very thankful this time of year and we are thankful, um, you know, for many, many different things. But um, how can we take that attitude of gratitude and apply it to our lives on a daily and minute by minute and hour by hour basis? Because... I know many, many people that listen to this podcast, um, and I'm one of them, you know, that focuses on meditation 10 minutes of the day. But if you're focusing on that for 10 minutes a day and you have another 23 hours and 50 minutes that you're focusing on the negative and you wonder why your life isn't changing, it doesn't become a mystery for too long. Um, Because where you put your focus and your attention is where your energy goes. And when your energy goes there, that is what you're going to attract more of. And so I've played with this a little bit with money because a lot of us have money blocks and I'm actually going through a money series right now. Um, And it's not one of those, I don't know, I I don't want to say it it is woo-woo, but it's not like out there woo-woo. You actually have to take intention and um, change some of the thoughts and beliefs and Um, things that you naturally uh, emulate and return to because it's what you've always known. And so it's really reprogramming your belief system. And so um, I've been playing with this a little bit around money and it's been very, very fun and interesting to play with because it's very easy to go into that mentality of, I don't know about you, but I grew up with um, definitely middle class, lower middle class, and had two sets of grandparents that grew up during the depression. So, you know, money is hard to get. It doesn't grow on trees. Um, You have to earn it. You have to, um, you know, all these different beliefs around money. And so I'm trying to systematically change those beliefs around abundance, because if we are all made of energy, money is also made of energy. And so why can't we attract the money into our lives that is energy if we're on the same frequency. And so anyway, it's been very interesting to play with that. And um, I've specifically been doing it for the month, the end of October, beginning of November. So till this is the beginning of November when I'm recording this. And it's it has been a phenomenal month. 
and nothing else has changed except for my perception and my beliefs and my conscious awareness of how I'm believing um, and focusing on abundance and money. So I will report back when I um, am finished with the, uh, what, what, I don't even know what to call it, the money course. I'm going to call it the money course. I'm on day 14, so it's a 30-day course, so I still have 15 days to go. So I will report back at the end and let you know exactly what uh, the end result was. But currently, it's, uh, it's kind of blowing my mind a little bit. So another component of this, so a lot of times I hear from people that, um, you know, I, I can't focus on this because I have a pain in the neck or my head always hurts or... Um, you know, I have pain in my body and I have a chiropractor actually that I, um, have been, I have been seeing on and off for probably three or four years now. And he was the first one to teach me that, um, pain in your body is actually stuck energy. And as I've gone down this path and, um, I know a lot of the pain that I've had in my body in the last three, four or five years has been attributed to grief. Because if you don't process the grief and you don't handle the grief and you don't let go of that energy and you don't let that energy move through, it gets stuck in your body and you have pain. And so um, if that's true and you can change the energy and you can change your frequency, then you should be able to relieve pain. Well, sometimes you need assistance with that and sometimes you need um, different methodology and different ways to do that. And so one of the ways that I have learned that really works for me is through um, EFT, which is tapping. And I did an episode with Terry Cardula and it was uh, one of the very first episodes, like episode five, six, seven, I'll link to it in the show notes, but it's a great technique and there's actually a download to go with it um, to show you all the different places to tap. But it was another one of those things that I just kind of uh, started experimenting with and it totally works like whenever I have pain in my back I'm like huh, I wonder what that could be and then I'll ask myself and I'm like oh it's probably stuck there I should probably do some EFT and release it and as soon as I do it's like wackadoo it's gone um so it works it's true I've tried it um the other thing that I utilize that I on a regular basis like every single day I use tuning forks um which is another way to align your energy and um, get things flowing the way they should. And I talked about those in an episode recently. I'll go back and I'll link to that one too. I can't remember exactly which episode it was, but I want you to be aware in this episode specifically that you have control of your exterior by controlling your interior. And one of the hermetic principles that is a, um, I think it's the first one. Oh, it's the second one. The principle of correspondence um, states as above, so below, and as below, so above. And for a long time, I kept hearing that. I'm like, what does that mean? As above, so below. I was like, and so I've heard some different interpretations about it. And one is, is that, you know, how you connect to the divine God, um, spirit, however you would like to reference that, um, through what you do here on the planet, um, how those two are connected will determine your experience. And so if you're not connected to source and the things you do, including your business, including like, you know, how you if you're in it to just make money, like if you're here just to make money, you're not in alignment with your soul purpose and with the divine um, because they're in conflict with each other. Does that mean you can't make money doing what you love and doing your business? Absolutely not. That's what the universe wants. But if you're just in it to get money, you're out of alignment and it may work for a while, but then you're going to find that the money isn't going to make you happy. You may have all the money in the world, but you're still not going to be happy because you're out of alignment with who you are and why you're here. And so I wanted to bring to your attention today, um, you know, some ways to connect to that energy, to um, become more aware of gratitude and some of the things that I've been experimenting with and trying, especially over the last year and um, how you can adjust your frequency and be focused on your frequency so that you can focus your thoughts 
um, in a more positive arena and change your vibration. Because when you can change your vibration and you can operate on a more positive frequency, you can attract more of what you want into your life, just naturally. And that may not be money, that may, be, may, may not be more customers. And ultimately, it's going to take you sitting down and realizing like, what is it? that I think having all of these things is going to bring me. And is it happiness? Is it joy? Is it freedom? Is it more time to hang out with family and friends? And I mean, what really is it? Like if you really dig deep and you're like, oh, I want more customers, I want, it's not really about the customers and it's really not about the money, but dig deeper and figure out, you know, what is it? And if you can align with the frequency that is related to what that is you really want, the rest of it is going to fall into um, suit. It's gonna be very easy. So you may be going, okay, that sounds great. I'm buying it, I got it. I'm, I wanna change my frequency. I wanna be focused on um, a positive vibration, but I don't know how. So let me share with you some of the things that I've been doing. So number one is, oh my gosh, I think I've been meditating now for I, I could have to go look at Insight Timer, but probably seven or eight years. It's been a long time. And I, do I meditate for hours a day? No, some days I do, some days I don't. Um, is it easy for me to just sit down and meditate and I make my brain be quiet? No, absolutely not. Today I was thinking about it. I was um, I was meditating. I got a little bit of a late start. Um, I just, I did a ton of stuff yesterday. I was really tired. And, and so it took me a long time to get into my meditation. And sometimes I'll just put on like a, a chant or music or something like that. And some days I can just really, I can quickly go into it. Um, and then other days I'm just like, my brain will not stop. It just won't stop. And so today was one of those days and it took me probably a good five or six minutes. And then I let, I let myself go into a deeper meditation. And then I kind of had to pull myself out because sometimes I'll just sit there for a long time and it's, um, it's not always in alignment with my schedule because <laughs> I have other things to do. But sometimes I will give myself the gift to just sit there for 30 minutes. And one of the best ways for me to start meditating um, and how I really learned the, the silence is through yoga. So if you haven't tried yoga, not all yoga classes are the same, but if you can find a um, yoga class that really focuses on the breath work, the asana, then that will likely be a good fit for you and your meditation practice. So the first thing that I want to say about yoga and meditation and breath is that they are all practice. And when you add that to the end of a yoga practice, a breath practice or a meditation practice, you realize that it's not perfect. It's not meditation perfect, yoga perfect. Um, and so as long as you are reaching for perfection, you are missing the gift in the practice. And to practice means you do it and you improve a little bit every single time. And there's really no end goal. It's just, you just keep practicing and you keep practicing and you learn something new and you um, become aware of something else. And so that's the first gift I want to give to you on Thanksgiving is that allow yourself the grace to practice. And it doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be exact every single time. And if there's a day that you sit down on your yoga mat or you uh, sit on your meditation cushion and your brain just won't stop, give yourself grace and say, that's okay. I'll practice again tomorrow. Um, and when you can become aware of your thoughts and the 90% of the thoughts that are controlling your existence, that are usually habit based on belief, when you can become aware of those during those quiet moments, during your practice, whether that's yoga or breath or meditation, um, that awareness brings gifts and it gives you the opportunity to change where you are aligned and where you focus. And when you focus on that awareness and then take that awareness and make small, subtle changes, not a giant life proclamation, but just little changes, those little changes add up every single day. And the next thing you know, every time you are confronted with something that's a little bit more challenging, like somebody that cuts you off in traffic or um, you have a fear around, I don't know, like when, when it's crappy weather out right now, I, there's this underlying fear of somebody's going to slide into my car. Well, what's the worst case scenario? If nobody gets hurt, somebody slides into your car, you may have to go to the repair shop and just letting go of, you know, the negative 
complications around whatever it is that's, you know, riling you up a little bit at a time. And that will enable you to take your attention and put it somewhere else. Like, oh, I'm so grateful I have a car that gets me around in the snow. I'm so grateful that I can drive. I'm so grateful that, um, do you see how the gratitude comes into play? It's not just like, oh, I'm grateful we have Thanksgiving dinner together. Yes, be grateful for that. But take that gratitude and take it out and make it a regular part of your life. And then another... um, Another component, I was looking at my notes really quick. Um, So we want to become aware. That's step number two or step number one. But step number two is to, there's something about taking a pen and putting it to paper that really cements gratitude. And so if you can just take, you know, five minutes a day, usually I do this before. I was doing it in the morning, but I found doing it um, at the end of the day is a better option for me because it gives me time to reflect on my day. What did we accomplish? Um... And I write down ten, a minimum of 10 things that I'm grateful for every day. And I try to make them different every day. And I try to make them specific. Um, but as you're getting started, like there's no rule book to this. Just take a few minutes and be gra- grateful. You know, um, some of the ones that I wrote down yesterday were uh, I was grateful that I got all the laundry done. I was grateful that I had a washing machine so I didn't have to wash it on a rock. I think about things like this, like, oh, my gosh, our ancestors had to go and do their laundry on a rock in the river. How horrible would that be? It was, you know, like, especially like a day to, like today, it's freezing. Um, how grateful I am that we have heat in our house, um, that we have a house, that I have food, that I can go to the grocery store and buy what I want to eat, that there's food in the grocery store. Um, so it just propels itself and just, you know, taking the five minutes that it takes to sit there and write down 10 things that you're grateful for will change your life. It will 100% change your life. Um, so if you take anything from this podcast episode, and implement it. I would love for you to implement that for 60 days and then come and tell me how your life has shifted because there's no possibility that it will not shift. Um, And I 100% believe that. So I would love for you to take that challenge and try that out. And then um, the other, the last part of this episode that I want to talk about is After you have become aware of where your brain goes and the things you think about and the habits that just automatically show up and don't beat yourself up. These are habits you've had and belief systems you've had your whole life. So you you can't change all that in one day. There's no way. It's going to take time and it's going to take attention and it's going to take practice. Um, But the light at the end of the rainbow is, is that as you start to make those changes, those little tiny changes, and this is no matter whether we are talking about life or we're talking about your business or we're talking about, you know, your lifestyle, like if you want to lose weight, those little changes that you consistently take on a regular basis in the vibration of gratitude will show up as positivity And you're going to wake up one day and you're going to say, oh my gosh, this is my life and I'm so grateful and I'm so lucky and I'm so um, blessed to have all the things that I have and the people that I have in my life and the relationships that I have in my life and the the different um, things that I've attracted into my life. And your whole world will open up because you've chosen to focus on the gratitude And um, I had something else that popped into my head while I was saying that. And now it just flew out. So the last component of that is that when you start to focus on that gratitude, it's contagious. And so, um, oh, I just remembered what I was going to say. A quick shift, a quick shift you can make in your mind and the things that you tell yourself is instead of saying, oh, I have to make those phone calls today, um, shift the word have to get. I get to reach out and talk to new people today and possibly change their lives. The feeling that shifts within you and your energy and even in attraction to their energy, they're going to receive it so much differently when it becomes a get to instead of a have to. And that is the impact you can leave with others and change the energy of others 
even subconsciously, um, because 90% of what we do is subconscious. So if our subconscious energy starts positively impacting their subconscious energy, we have the ability to heal the world. So that's what I want to leave you with today is you have the ability to not only heal your life and change your life and change the way things look for yourself, but you also have the ability to do it for other people. So happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. I hope you enjoy your day. I'm losing my voice. This is um, episode three. So I'm losing my voice. Um, But I do really wish that you have a, a really happy Thanksgiving. And I hope that you take the energy of gratitude from this month and this week and this day and you implement it every day into the next year. And I would love to hear if you take any of these tips um, and implement them on a regular basis. I'd love for you to come share that with me on my Facebook page at Elisa Connor Consulting over on Facebook. And you can find the link at elisaconnor.com forward slash 64. In the meantime, happy Thanksgiving and I will see you next week. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Take care.